We've all had them sometimes in our games. Uh, doesn't matter if this is Valorant, Counter Strike, Overwatch, bad teammates, uh, people that um, just seem to be on an uneven playing field where the enemy team is just stacked against you. Uh, normally, this happens because the MMR system or the ranking system is calculating you in to be the carry. And how do you do that? How do you carry a game where your teams can't hold the site? Uh, loses every firefight they go into. How do you carry in those scenarios? Well done, beautiful and lovely gamers. My name is Jono. Before we start the video, of course, a like on the video. I'm a small YouTube content creator, so it helps against the algorithm, helps spread this out to help the community improve, get better at the game. So hopefully, everybody on the entire level of the community in Valorant right now can improve and become better at the game just generally raise how competitive this game is um i have three tips on how you guys can hopefully carry teammates carry games where it feels like it is very lopsided towards the enemy team so with no further ado like give your tips down in the comment section i would like to gather them and hopefully present some of these in a future upcoming video where i take tips from the community so please do drop tips or histories of when you have had bad teammates and how you dealt with that um, down in the comment section below but i really start the first one that i want to point out is to use your team um, even a bad player is an asset they will be holding an angle and at least dealing damage and even if they don't do that they'll be dragging a fire dragging attention away sometimes you can't do anything about it you can of course try to say hey don't push this area sometimes they will be pushing into suicide situations at that point you sometimes just have to let them go but if you can play off your teammates it does actually help out a lot um using them to go in and take the brand force get the enemy to get into you know heavily into their spray pattern um, make sure that he has also some of that damage and hopefully drag the attention away from you so you can trade off his body so if you know you have bad teammates that for example always like pushing a specific angle you can always try to back them up by not sacrificing yourself but trying to play off whatever they are trying to do so you can get some value out of the death it's so important to try to body up uh, and sometimes you're doing very very long flanks which i see a lot when i do private coaching i see a lot of people do these incredibly long flanks all around the map if you know we know we're pushing a you know this guy will be flanking all the way around to c clearing c and then rotating and then trying to get up behind people on a because he thinks that's the way that he's carried but a lot of time when your team is doing a full man push if you are part of that push not always but if you're part of that push you can play off whatever they're trying to do trade off their bodies um, play off the damage and the attention they were dragging and do a lot of stuff if you're flanking in those moments you know your team might lose that those fights where there was a bunch of opportunity that you could have gone off to and get easy kills no need to make this harder than it has to be we want the easiest kills that we can get a lot of times when the enemy is not paying attention to you those are the easiest skills and number two is to actually just wear down the enemy and not just you know with damage of course if you can deal damage and so on uh, make sure they don't spend all your utility at once but if you can you know deal all damage as good but wearing down the enemy team as in wear them down psychologically this will help you stay alive and hopefully get far more kills they won't be holding the angle in the beginning of the match they'll be hard scoping holding angles really aggressively of course you can try to strafe peek that or abuse the fact they will be doing that but if you just wait a little bit they might start doubting start paying attention especially in low elos which slows their reaction time and all of a sudden is somebody gonna peek or they're not gonna peek the timing for the enemy team to use to kind of predict the peak and really stay you know, focused will start reducing and therefore there's a lower chance of you actually dying so play the time you have plenty of time on offense and when it comes to defense it's all about slowing down and you know playing the time and getting you know it down so they're forced to rush in and plant right so play the time wear down the enemy team not just with health and resources but also just wear them down mentally make sure that they don't know where you're pushing from deny them that intelligence don't just immediately rush and peek the angle because that leads into number three and that is you need to stay alive you need to be there in the end we've always we've seen it and that's the worst feeling when you know that you could have you know it's a it's a it's a 3v1 or 3v2 and if you were alive this would be an easy carry but because your teammates are just worse they somehow lose a 1v3 and you lose that round and if you hadn't died earlier that could have been the reason that you could have won that so stay alive you are so much more important than the rest of your team this will help 
again, wear down the enemy team and also help you play off your teammates. Keeping you alive will keep you to get more opportunities. And again, you can't care when you're dead. Sometimes it's worth, right? Sometimes you get three or four kills. And, you know, if your team loses that in a 1v4 and, you you know, you peaked first, you got three kills immediately, straight up the bat, you, you die because of that. And then your team loses that in a in a 2v4 or whatever. Okay, some rounds are unlucky. Some rounds are, okay, that just happened. Some matches are just, okay, GG, unlucky, go next. But could you have maybe stayed alive after that third kill? Or could you gotten two kills and then gotten out? I stayed alive. Because then you're far more useful, right? You get two kills, it's now a 3v5, and you can now start playing off your bad teammates to start trading down the three last players of the enemy team. That is the important part of carrying in this game. Use your team, even when they're bad players or bad mechanically or whatever, right? Just use them as a resource and don't think too much about it. Don't focus on the fact that your team is bad. Focus about how the enemy team is playing bad. Play the time. You have plenty of time. You don't need to immediately peek if you are... Really good mechanically, you can straight pick a corner and or surely pick something and just immediately get a pick. Great, do it. But if not, you can play the time, slow them down, and look for opportunities. Remember when the enemy team is pushing a site, for example, they need to kill so many fucking angles. If you're playing that slow, or even worse, if they're defending a site, they don't know, you know, if they're holding C on heaven on Haven and you're push they don't know if you're pushing A or pushing B, they have no fucking clue where you're pushing, right? They are busy locking down different angles, right? Put, them, put yourself in their shoes. They have no clue where you're peeking from. If you have rushed the first and most obvious spot ever, it's a free kill, even against spam players. But if you're playing a different angle, or if you peek way later than what they were expecting, they might have swapped the angle to something else. They might have stopped paying attention. And then the shots become much more easier. The enemy team is not prepared for what you're doing. And it gives you so much more opportunities. And in the end, just try to stay alive. Doesn't mean you should play passive, right? Because you've got to play aggressive. You've got to try to get those picks. Play off your team, right? Being able to trade, right? And get that advantage. But you can't carry when you're dead. There's a fine line, and that's some of the things that I cover a lot when I private coach, between staying alive and playing aggressive, right? Being able to capitalize on enemy mistakes and opportunities on the map, but at the same time, not suicide rushing into the spawn, right? There's a very fine balance in that, and that's something that you should try to work on. And I can make guides on that if you guys are interested. If you made it this far into the video, I, I would like to thank you. Please drop uh, fish, sure. Drop fish down in the comment section, it will help to comment. So I know how many people actually made it this far, and how many people like this type of content. Of course, if you want to improve, rank up, and get better at the game, you can hire me as a private coach in either this game or Overwatch. It's 50 euros for a two-hour session. Hit me up. In the description down below, there's a link to a Discord server where you can send me a DM. Of course, my Twitter and my Twitch is also there. So, do drop a follow, like this video if you like it, share it around, subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content and you want to see more comments and all that. It's very much appreciated. It helps against the algorithm. But besides that, I'll stop rambling. Please do the chaos, the positive. I love you guys very, very much. My name is Minjono, and as always, guys, keep the enemy in your crosshair. Uh -huh.